Hi, good day to all. My name is Benjamin Chan and I'm from the ACOM Fire Engineering team in Singapore. I'm here today to present to you our paper on evacuation simulation modeling for a deep underground subway station. This paper is co-written by my colleagues, Mr. Chin Kok Seong Brian, Ms. Ko Sing Yen, and myself. Now, the outline of our presentation today includes an introduction, an introduction to our paper, the objectives behind our paper. And I'll show you also the subway station um, pathfinder model that we have used, the various modeling inputs and parameters, our assumptions made, the six case studies that's been carried out, and their corresponding results. I'll finish off by our conclusion and possible future research that will aid us as fire engineers in our, in our work for um, evacuation simulations. The world is increasingly becoming an urban environment, and with urbanization comes population growth. Together with population growth comes um, traffic congestion issues. Now, urban rail subway systems are an effective means to reduce the traffic congestion faced, which is why we see an increased development of underground subway systems within the region of Southeast Asia, um, in countries such as Malaysia, Philippines, and um, Indonesia. Now, certain countries like Singapore, where I'm from, um, there, are the, there are national codes and standards which provide guidance to the design of underground subway systems in terms of fire safety um, requirements. For countries without such standards, NFPA 130 then becomes a useful reference to provide such guidance. Now, specific for evacuation requirements, NFPA 130 specifies that um, sufficient egress components need to be provided such that the platform can be evacuated within four minutes and occupants are able to reach the point of safety within six minutes. Point of safety meaning either on grid or where certain conditions can be met. Point of safety could be at the station concourse. Now, based on our past experiences in our line of work, where we have carried out a number of evacuation simulations on various projects, what we find is that whenever dynamic evacuation modeling is employed, you can more or less um, expect to yield different results when compared to static evacuation calculations. Now, that being said, it then brings us to the objective of, of our paper here, which, to, which is to examine how two factors, well, number one, the cost factor for room queue time, and number two, the location of the final exits, or in other words, the distance of the evacuation route for the passengers or occupants. Now, how these two factors actually impact on the exit choice by occupants and the evacuation time of the station platform. Okay. So here we see the trial subway station model in Pathfinder they have created. <clears throat> okay, so there are five underground levels for the subway, subway station, um, and uh, altogether it's approximately 34 meters deep. So at the lower platform, we have uh, at B5 level, the lower platform. We have the upper concourse, upper platform at B4 level. B3 level is omitted from our Pathfinder model as it is a bypass floor and not accessible by the public. We have the lower concourse at B2, upper concourse at B1. Now, the platform levels and the concourse levels are interconnected by a series of uh, public escalators and staircases at the central region here. So passengers uh, basically go in and out of the station via the fare gates here and through the corridors and through the public staircase and entrance and in and out through the um, station entrance and grade. Now, there are four sets of um, protected escape, escape staircases at either ends of the station. So there's two here and there's two here. So in order for occupants in the station to assess these protected staircases, they'll have to go through a series of back of house corridors located here, here, and here. <coughs> okay, so uh, model inputs and assumptions made in our Pathfinder simulations. So uh, we have followed the guiding principles of NFPA 130 in order to derive the worst case passenger loading within the station. So this brings us to the number of about 2,300 occupants within the station. And these occupants start off at um, the upper and lower platform levels with the bulk of the passengers actually starting off within the train cars stopped at the trackways. We take reference to the SFP handbook um, for occupant walking speeds. So unimpeded walking speed on flat surfaces taken at about 1.2 meter per second and um, along, escapes, uh, along staircases and escalators at about 0.9 meter per second. We have taken an, a moving escalator speed of about 0.75 meter per second. The various capacities in terms of width of each of these egress components provided in the station as such. 
uh, for the protected staircase, the escalator, and the open staircases shown here. So two key assumptions that we have made is that um, occupants will be able to walk on the upward moving escalators in the Pathfinder model. And we have discounted one upward moving escalator in the Pathfinder model as well. So discounting the escalator is also an NFPA 130 requirement when it comes to evacuation design. <coughs> okay, so the six, six case studies that we have considered here. So case studies one, two, and three, we basically vary the room queue time cost factors, gradually increasing it from one to three and to five. All final exit uh, in the Pathfinder model are located at grid. So what we see here for case studies one, two, and three, the, the final exits in the Pathfinder model for the escape protected staircases are here and here at grid level. And the final exit for the station entrance is located at grid level here, right after the public staircases and escalators. For case studies four, five, and six, what we've done is we have actually kept the room queue time cost factor constant at one default value. And we have actually uh, relocated the final exit used to represent the public station entrance, gradually moving it closer and closer to the occupants at the platform, thereby reducing the, evacu the length of the evacuation route for, for these occupants. So for case study four, we have the final exit in the Pathfinder model to represent the station entrance located here. And in, in uh, case study five, the final exits are located here right after the fair gates. And case study six to the limit, where the final exits in the Pathfinder model are located at the top of the top of the landing after the public escalators and staircase at the upper concourse level. Before we get to our results, I'd like to remind again that the objective of our study here is to look at how two factors, number one, the room queue time cost factor, and number two, the evacuation, the length of the evacuation route for passengers, how these two factors will actually um, influence the choice of exit by the passengers in the Pathfinder model. Now, in our case study one, our base case scenario, what we find is that the majority of the passengers, up to about 90% of them, actually choose to, to evacuate the model via the unfamiliar back of house exit staircases located here and here. Only 10%, which is a minority of passengers, actually choose to evacuate via the more familiar front of house um, station entrance area. We observe this and we do not think that this is a um, reasonable distribution of occupant choice of exit. Um, where we can, we can actually expect that um, a larger proportion of occupants or passengers should actually evacuate via the more familiar front of house station entrance. In terms of the platform clearance time, what we find is that um, the timing recorded is well within the four minute criteria set forth in NFPA 130. Now, on to case studies two and three, where we gradually increase the room queue time cost factors to three and then further to five. Based on this increase, what we find is that uh, in terms of choice of exit, more passengers are actually being prom um, we actually promote more passengers to make use of the more familiar front of house station entrance for evacuation from the Pathfinder simulation. So up to about a quarter of them actually choose to use the familiar station entrance to evacuate the Pathfinder model. <clears throat> now in terms of platform clearance time, we do not see any significant difference from earlier results. So again, the timings are all well within the four minutes criteria set forth in NFPA 130. Now for case studies four, five, and six, where we start to shorten the length of the evacuation route to the station entrance exit represented in Pathfinder simulation model. So in case study four, we shift our uh, final exit in the Pathfinder model to represent the station entrance to this location here at the upper platform level. For case study five, we shift the final exits right after the fair gates at this location here and here. <clears throat> for case study six model, we actually shift the final exits right up to the limit where it is, it, it, the final exits in the path final model are located at the top landing of the public staircases and escalators uh, at, the upper, uh, at the upper concourse level. Okay, so the results of um, case studies four, five, and six show that we are, we are actually able to promote a good, the good uh, proportion of, of the passengers to actually make use of the more familiar front of house public um, station entrance in the Pathfinder simulation model. So the spread for case studies four and five especially, the spread is more or less even with about 50-50 spread between um, the choice of exit between uh, front of house familiar exits and back of house unfamiliar exits. Now in terms of uh, platform clearance time, what we find is that uh, we start to exceed the four minute criteria set forth in NFPA 130. So we, we start to think about this, whether or not in reality, 
um, sufficient egress components have been provided where we actually expect more people to use the front of house exits. So whether or not this still meets the four minute criteria set forth in NFPA 130. Now here's a big summary of the cumulative distribution of exit usage spread across two big categories, meaning the familiar station entrance and the unfamiliar back of house escape staircases. In case study one, we have got a majority of the passengers actually choosing to use the unfamiliar escape staircases as compared to only 10% of them using the familiar station entrance. And this in fact is what set us off the series of uh, case studies two, three, four, five, and six. Because we, we feel that this is unreasonably, there's an unreasonably high proportion of people actually choosing to use unfamiliar escape routes in the Pathfinder simulation model. So um, in case studies two and three, we start to play around with the room queue time cost factor. And we see that uh, we can actually increase the number of passengers who actually used to use the familiar front of house es um, escape station entrance for escape. Now in case studies four, five, and six, we took one step, two things, two things one step further to actually shorten the evacuation route leading to the final exit used to represent the public station entrance in a Pathfinder model. And from there, we actually um, see a significant increase in the number of passengers who actually choose to use the station entrance for escape in the Pathfinder simulations, bringing it thereabouts to an even 50-50. Here's a summary of um, the lower platform clearance time for all six case studies done. So we see here uh, for case studies four, five, and six, where we shorten the, the evacuation, the distance to the, evac the final exit points in the Pathfinder model for the exit used to represent the public station entrance, uh, we start to exceed the four minute criteria set forth in NFPA 130. Okay, finally, conclusion from our findings. So we find that um, room queue time cost factor, yes, it does impact on the, the choice of exit used by occupants and it does impact on the platform evacuation time. But, but however, the impact um, starts to die down after a certain limit where if we actually increase it beyond a, a cost factor of five, the, 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 the impact isn't really that big anymore. Now, final exit location, yes, uh, it does impact on the, on the exit of choice by the occupants and the platform evacuation time. So by varying the final exit location, we are effectively shortening the, the, the travel distance to the final exit in the Pathfinder model for these um, familiar public station entrance uh, exit points. And we, we think that this is also a, a possible option to consider as a, as a method to actually promote uh, the use of familiar routes for occupants in Pathfinder model simulation. Okay, so I can't say this enough, but user judgment is an important factor in this, where we think um, we need to have uh, make, make our own judgment whether or not um, our, the results that we get from Pathfinder simulation, is it um, reflective of reality? Um, so as what we have demonstrated in the paper, where we start off with uh, case study one, 90% of the passengers using um, unfamiliar exit routes, we do not think it's reasonable. Um, so, you know, as a designer, we should give due consideration to things like um, station layout, um, consider whether or not your occupants are familiar with the building, um, and, and then we have a think about whether or not the simulation you get from a Pathfinder simulation, whether the results are reasonable or not. <clears throat> so while we know that, um, while, we, while we feel that 90% um, using unfamiliar routes is, is not reasonable, we also do not <clears throat> have a clear-cut figure in mind so what is that, 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 that ideal uh, proportion in terms of uh, split between familiar and unfamiliar routes, which then lead us to our, <clears throat> what we think future research can help us out as designers. So if we're able to get some kind of future research and data um, that, will, that will provide designers with some form of guidance in terms of um, choice of familiar and unfamiliar access by passengers in a subway environment, <clears throat> it will help us uh, when we develop our Pathfinder simulation models or, or other evacuation models help us to, to, to basically tweak our models to get um, reasonable results in the, in the evacuation simulation that we conduct and actually to eventually to come up with robust uh, fire safety solutions for evacuation. Okay. With this, I come to end my presentation today. I thank you for your time and I thank Kandahit for the opportunity to present our paper. Thank you. Okay, so we're live on the stream. So we'll just give people a second to move over and we'll start to see the little eye count at the top there, the little eyeballs will start going up. Welcome everybody to the Q&A as they filter in here. Um, please feel free to ask your questions in chat. 
we also have with us Brian Chin, who is part of this project. So he's here to answer questions as well. And before, uh, as we're waiting for some questions to come in, um, I did want to mention how you, like how you considered that the Pathfinder's, uh, I would say like default assumption is like shortest time or shortest distance as a fundamental, like as one of the fundamental costs for deciding which exit to take. It seems like that was the primary driver of selection was the closer you got the door, you know, the shorter the distance that the percent shifted to that closer door. Yes, uh, that, that, was, that was what we were trying, really, really trying to tweak here. Um, because um, we, we know that um, the occupants will more likely take the shortest path to actually, that's um, assuming that all occupants have full knowledge of all the exits in the building. Mm -hmm. But that's very often the case in, in reality, where you know, some of the back of house exits where, where, it's, where the routes are actually not commonly used by occupants, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, actually most people are actually unaware of, of such um, of, of the existence of such exits. Mm -hmm. So, so that's where we play around with it and, and try to actually shorten the distances, um, or at least the, the distances in the pathfinder model. We try to shorten them such that we try to encourage more people to actually use those familiar exits. So that that was the whole um, objective behind it. And I wondered if you considered using the. Uh more like the exit door selection option in Pathfinder, where you could say this percentage of the population goes to main exit, these, this percentage goes to side exits, or is at least aware of them? Yeah, uh, that, that, that we did consider um, using in the first place. Uh, but what we find is that um, and we, we are more or less left undecided how many, how many percent of people we want to actually assign to be aware of certain exits. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, it, it, is a, it is a common pool of, 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 of common... Um, uh, occupant or common passengers will be using the subway systems. So, so it, it's hard for us to determine that. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, I think <clears throat> we were just kind of, as we were watching your talk discussing this, so we'll, we may have some ideas there. There is a question coming in. It says, for case study five, did you observe pinch points at the fire gates? Or I'm sorry, at the fair gates. And is that why the evacuation time exceeds four minutes for that case study? Did you manage to figure out the reason of the evacuation time exceeding four minutes for case study uh, six? Okay. Um, okay. Um, the reason why I exceeded four minutes is not so much um, pinch points within the fair gates because those are actually at the concourse level already. Um, it's more the pinch point that happens um, on the platform levels itself where we got a good number or we got, we got a good proportion, almost 50% of the occupants, actually using the, the, the more familiar front of house um, escalators, the open staircases at the station platform to link to the concourse. So that's, those are the actual pinch, point, pinch points at the platform level rather than at the concourse. Because concourse-wise, once they get to the concourse, it, they basically just flow through the fair gates. There's more than enough capacity there. Mm -hmm. Excellent. We'll see yeah. if there's... Any other questions come through? Okay, I'm not seeing another one coming, <clears throat> excuse me, another one coming through right now. So we'll just kind of gracefully wrap up. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming in here for the presentation, for the Q&A. Um, really appreciate your attendance and hope to see you again in yep. Singapore. We'll see you. Yep, sure. Okay, thank you, Brian. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks.